Item number SCP C270 Optic Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures Foundation Front Company Center Home Medical Group is the facility housing subjects afflicted with SCP C270. They are to provide palliative care to said subjects and are to ensure proper sedation of subjects in the event of a familiar visit. The subliminal effects of SCP-6270, as well as the psychological and physiological impairment of the sedatives, have thus far remained an effective determined to families opting for at-home care, allowing for the permanent detention and study. Sound cancelling earphones have been provided to staff for their well-being and are not to be worn when civilians are present in the facility. Description Dialysis is an anomalous medical condition suffered by 37 individuals who field the Harbinger broadcast, a pilot broadcast transmission that took over the Rocky Mountains PBS channel on February 15th at 0123, airing across the state of Colorado. The condition is characterized by the alteration of the subject's somatosounds sounds or internal noises produced by the body in its initial stage. The sounds of heartbeat, stomach churning, and even bone cracking become wholly inaudible, instead producing infrasound, sounds which are inaudible to the human ear, but may subconsciously produce feelings of dread, sorrow, or unease in listeners. As this condition was not urgently anomalous to the casual observer, initial containment consists of outpatient observation. It was noted, however, that within the first three months, subjects became steadily withdrawn due uncomfortable social interactions on account of the deleterious psychological effects of regular exposure to the infrasound they produce. Inpatient containment would begin in July due to the onset of the second stage of dialysis, which would progress to hinder the subject's audible speech. While sound waves are indeed produced at will by subjects, all sounds emanating from them would consist solely of infrasound. This includes reflexive verbalizations such as coughing, sneezing, bulging, etc. To the public, this inability to properly communicate was characterized as a form of neurodegenerative asphyxia, and patients are referred to SHMG for inpatient care. Interviews with subjects over the following weeks revealed another symptom of dialysis. Namely, that each subject's perception of the somatosounds sounds grew in intensity over time, despite their inaudible nature. Furthermore, each subject claimed to hear even minute bodily sound with marked clarity, with Subject 22 describing the sound of her eyes moving as hollow grinding, like something dragged across concrete on a large empty room. Similarly, Subject 5 had to be placed on suicide watch after attempting to suffocate himself with a plastic bag due to the stress of an ever-present, weary morning of blood transversing his veins. Though these noises are by nature wholly subjective, researchers are able to pinpoint a possible cause with computed Kamakovi scans. They were able to diagnose no subjects as suffering from superior canal dehiscence syndrome upon finding abnormally formed holes within the inner ear. Discussion is currently underway with this revelation as to whether or not this should be corrected in all subjects with surgery or allowed to progress for research purposes. Addendum, the Harbinger Podcast. The following is the original Harbinger broadcast reproduced in its entirety. Testing with D-class subjects have shown it not to confer dialysis and is safe for viewing.
puddle and a gray different air. But the storm was unforgiving. The world is empty now. We're all trying for taking. It is a violet view. Violet light. It is unknown what information or instructions were to be included on page 2 of the broadcast as on-duty engineers were able to purge the signal before it fully aired. A combined investigation with the FCC proved fruitless in finding the culprits. Addendum Subject 31 Due to suffering from frequent headaches, CT scans were performed on Subject 31, revealing what was believed to be a sizable tumor in the brain. In a way, craniotopy was able to excise it and save the subject. This surgery was complicated once the brain tissue was exposed to open air and the organ began vibrating. The head surgeon initially refused to carry out the procedure as the minute movements of the organ were enough to make successful excision infeasible without endangering the life of the subject or risking permanent brain damage. They were overruled by the acting site director. Subject 31 would be pronounced dead following traumatic brain injury during the excision attempt. Removed from the brain tissue was a deposit of calcified Osseous tissue shaped into a short rod with two prongs in a U shape. Reminiscent of a tuning fork, when struck, it produced a single elongated tone in the subject's voice, sounding as if they were wailing. During the autopsy, it was discovered that the internal face of the skull was marked with multiple depressions corresponding with fingerprints matching each of the other subjects alongside countless scratches on the medial side of the Proteus Ridge near the ear canal. Subject 15 has begun complaining of more frequent migraines. <laughs> 